Hey, it's IG back again. Thanks for uh, stopping by and thanks for the well wishes from last week. I wasn't doing too well. Something was going on. No, it's not the COVID or anything like that. It's just this basic nature, you know. <clears throat> Here we're covering the second uh, part of the Gargoyle video series. Uh, this is more or less the uh, fine tuning and detail work. Using a diamond burr with the Motoflex to smooth out the eye sockets. It's a spherical diamond burr, eighth inch uh, shank. Here I'm starting to define the teeth with the diamond burr again with the Motoflex tool. This gargoyle almost has a bat appearance, as someone mentioned earlier in the previous video comment section. And I, I have to agree on that, too. It does look like a bat, somewhat. Yeah, special thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to putting more videos up for everyone. And... Uh, Hopefully you guys can get some ideas and tips and stuff like that, even though I may not be constantly talking throughout the video. Just working on the neck area here with uh, the Motoflex, just putting in some lines for the future uh, contours around the neck. It's going to be kind of like a appendage-like neck where it's like stretches out like an accordion shape. Again, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I'll respond as best I can in the comments section. The next few videos are going to be uh, based on certain anatomical parts of the face. Start off with the eyes for the first video. In the second video, probably the nose. And then the third will be the mouth area, the basic uh, three parts of the face. And then uh, after that, we'll go from there. And after that's done, we're going to start on a request project. It's going to be actually a bear. And I got a few ideas about that. I think it's going to be pretty neat. So you guys want to stay tuned for that one. This ponderosa is actually pretty nice wood. It's got some strange colors to it. Like you could see almost like an orange layer effect on top of the head and down by the nose. And it's part of the, the tree rings. The orange portion of the ponderosa almost looks like a crown on top of the gargoyle's head. So it fits uh, perfectly. And uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Just open up the mouth cavity a little bit to give it a little more depth and uh, dimensionality. Using a smaller uh, spherical burr on that one so it can get inside there easier because it's such a tight space, you know. Otherwise, I'd be like a 
making more of a gap in there with a bigger bigger burr and also it would probably damage the teeth as well so I decided not to go big on that one. Moving over to the neck area of the piece, trying to get the lines uh, to find where I'm going to make a deeper contours on the neck area. So yeah, here I'm busting out the knife, uh, doing some uh, traditional carving, I guess I would call that, instead of the power carving. Um, you know, like I, like I said, it's always good to mix things up, you know, throw a bunch of tools in the mix. You know, what the heck, right? The more tools you have, I guess the more opportunities you have to complete your piece, so it's always good to have an varied arsenal so to speak the knife i'm using is called a mora knife i think it's from sweden actually and my mom got it for me on my birthday so that was a really nice nice uh thing to receive in the mail so yeah it's all good comes in quite handy to say the least and it just goes right through the wood like uh like uh, no one's business it has knife super sharp though it's uh, almost deadly yeah this knife makes quick work of this as opposed to maybe a power tool I'm not sure but it's a fairly fast process interesting thought uh knives don't require power it's just all from your body so let's say for example um the power grid goes down you can't run your tools anymore you have to fire up a generator or go off solar power so there you go you always have power from your body so it's kind of interesting to look at it that way most of my uh, power tools are powered from solar power i have a off-grid cabin more or less so basically I rely on solar energy to charge my batteries and whatnot because I'm not connected to the grid at all and there is uh, no reliance on power companies anyone that gets a chance of uh, you know throw up a couple panels batteries charge controller whatever you basically have like all the power you need, you know, to run small tools. Granted, you have to have enough proper sunlight. I mean, when it comes down to it, I have a zero electricity bill. It's all paid for by the sun, more or less, and including the initial startup cost for the equipment and gear and stuff like that. So, so I'm self-sufficient and unshackled from the grid, more or less, so... That's kind of a nice thought. Yeah, power companies probably despise me for the fact that I don't have to pay a monthly electric bill or anything like that among other people that follow the same lifestyle that I have. Working underneath the chin, trying to remove some uh, wood with the knife. Yeah, I use my thumb to push the knife through the wood. Kind of like when I use my scribe, I do the same technique. <clears throat> kind of makes a 
the whole process a little bit easier. Just using some 220 grit sandpaper around the neck area to get things smoothed out a bit. I usually sand by hand because it's a uh, fact is I my faces are pretty much small scale and there's no need to bust out a machine just to sand these like small places around the face and stuff like that. Yeah, if I was doing larger scale pieces, I'd probably use a mechanical sander device to get things done a little bit quicker since it'd be a larger scale. But at this point, I'll just uh, rely on hand sanding to get these things done. Here I'm uh, testing out the new Dremel 2050-2050. Uh, they also refer to it as a Stylo Plus. It's designed for a light work, not heavy duty stuff. And it's, I think it's great for uh, detail work, but I wouldn't go beyond that for anything seriously as far as taking wood away. It's good for uh, minute details and stuff like that. So yeah, this is kind of like a mini review. Um, might as well throw it in here while we're, while we're at it, you know, so. Instead of like making a separate video and make it just for that, might as well combine it, you know. So yeah, it's great for this uh, small detail work on the teeth, actually. You can get into really small places and stuff, and you're not encumbered by the tether of a Motoflex tool or flex shaft or anything like that. Yeah, it comes with a little power adapter that steps down 120 volts to 18 volts DC and uh, only have it a half only at a half a amp too so it's pretty cool it's like perfect low power consumption kind of tool it also has a variable speed range from 5,000 to 22,000 rpm the max size burr it takes is eighth inch shank size and anything below that and you can't beat the price on this it was just under fifty dollars i think at the local home depot it's just one of those impulse buys i saw it on the shelf i go what the heck you know um we'll see how it works though it seems like it's a brushless motor style rotary tool which uh, probably is a good idea and uh, means less maintenance yeah it's, uh, that's about all I got for this review on this tool um, besides the fact it's got a long power core which makes it nice for uh, most work environments I would say so anyway that's about all I have to say about it we'll um, see how things go down the road so anyway that's about it for that. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Um, appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hey, take care. Later.